So how do I start a sketch like this? Well, when I'm looking at that reference, I'm thinking about the silhouette and I'm also looking at the proportions like this. If you're a beginner, you could even sketch that out if you like. There's a big circle here. We're dividing this shape into three. That's where the brow is and the bottom of the nose. And it just helps to have that in mind when you're sketching. Also a point here with the ear is. So the back of his hair is the first thing I'm going to sketch. So you can even draw like a line like that. Make it, we'll add some more detail to the hair later. And then we can see that the shape here, the chin's about there and then the shirt. So I'm just getting those big shapes in. And it, the collar comes like this. And then it helps with that dramatic feel because you're getting all the right angles. Now we've got that big shape that we're looking at. Now we'll divide it into a smaller shape. So I'll look at it, look at the reference. And I'm going to divide that hair. I'm going to use the hairline as where I'm dividing that face up. Now we've got the side of the face. Now we can divide this into three. So it's about here and here. So we've got three like we have on this. So now we can add the eyebrows in. I'm looking at that shape of the forehead as well. And then the now with the nose, we'll do the bottom of the nose. And it's got a nostril. Add that, make that nose back there. And we know the split between the lip is between the bottom of the nose and the chin. It's about halfway and then I'll go up a little bit. And then down to the corner there. Okay, and then there's a little line under the lip there. It has that nice curve there on this side view. Okay, so now the eye is the most important part of the sketch. So we can do the same thing. We can break this eye up into the big shape. So if we go back, angle back like the same angle as the nose, about halfway between the bottom of the nose and the brow, and then go up a little bit. So it's supposed to be about two thirds. Let's just draw the main shapes around the eye there. It's about the size of the eye. And then we can divide that shape as the top eyelash there. A nice little iris. Let's add some curly hair. Gonna ref refine some of the shapes as you go as well, because Part of it is guessing and then adjusting it when you come back. So maybe the ear needs to come back like this. And I can see that space there is a bit too, a bit too big there. So add some more not expressive feel to the back of the head. Can add the pupil. Now we're getting into the details. I recommend adding some really dark spots to the sketch. The top eyelashes can be quite dark and that'll help those features stand out. And the corners of the eye is also a good one. And then the nostrils, without making them full circles, just make that quite dark. And then the split between the lip, that is also another spot to bring out the sketch. And now the really fine details, like you might have some freckles. Okay, so that's a line work where you work at the big shapes and you go down to the small shapes. Um, now let's get on to the exciting part of adding watercolor. So I use the same process as I do for my sketching with my watercolor. I go from big areas to small areas, but I also go from light to dark. So I have a flat brush. This is a 12 millimeter brush. And then I have all my Karataki colors here. They're watered down paints. So I have it all ready to go for this line and wash sketch. So I've got this burnt sienna, which I've watered down a lot. And we're going to add some nice strokes here and leaving little sections of white. So dip it in and then I'll Put it on like that. And I'm not worried about going over the lines. So I've got a really nice big shape there. So now I've got this dark gray blue and I'm going to do the hair here. And this is quite fun doing this technique because you kind of feel like you're just slapping it down and it matches the way I sketch this as well. And if you've got hair like this, make sure there's lots of uh, white gaps. Okay, that felt quite expressive. And there's a hair here. Kind of missed that where I was going to put it. And the eyebrow. And I was thinking that I'd make his shirt a little bit more bold. So I've got my rose color and I'm going to do that here. I'm trying to get mimic almost the, that line work with some nice dynamic lines. And when that dries, it looks a lot clearer and nicer. This is um, 270 GSM paper, so it's quite thick. It's a Stillman and Burn sketchbook. So once I've got my 
my three main areas. Now I'm going to add in some layers to bring this to life. My first layer is to add a tiny bit more blush around cheeks here over the nose. So now I've got that base coat. Now we can do some shadows. So my shadows here are going to be in purple. So we're just going to add a really light shadow around where you can see here the eyes here and shadow in here, bottom of the nose. And the top lip has shadow underneath that bottom lip and then around that edge. Some shadow around the neck. And now in the hair. On the shirt, just imagining where those shadows would come in. And I'm just going to add some more layers now that they're dry a bit. And then the burnt sienna, darken the lip up. And now we have that second layer on top. Now we can really exaggerate a dark points to the painting. So I'm just going to add these around. There's a dark spot there. Nice. I think I'll put a dark pink here with the shadows. Now that that layer has dried, I'm going to exaggerate some of those shadows there. Ooh. Now this is where you can get some nice, nice details around there. You've laid all the base. I've just kept layering until I like the, the feel of it. Try not to overdo it. And now we're coming towards the end. I can use my Posca marker. This is a fine tip pen. And I can add some white paint to just add some highlights around the place. Put a little highlight on his, in his eye. Right there. Some highlights on his nose. Wet glints across there, some on his lip, and then the rest, uh, little squiggly lines through his hair where those individual hairs glint the light. Adding some nice cuts through the line work and through the watercolour. These are little fine details that work just at the end. Get a bit of texture with different colours. So, got a bit of green there. Add a few strokes. So the important things to remember here was when I'm sketching, I'm thinking big shapes and then going down into the details so you don't get lost. And then the same with the watercolor, we go in and we add the big shapes first and the light shapes, and then we go and build our way up into the details until we've got little highlights and the, the splatter marks at the end, and it really brings it all to life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did painting it. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. And if you'd like to go a bit more in depth into the proportions and how to set up, set up a sketch like this, um, check out this video right here. And thank you to all my Patreons who support me each month. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.